No, it's, it's doable. Turn uh, to uh, John 14, 16. The Lord will encourage you tonight and bless you. We're doing these care groups. We're doing these care groups because uh, people need to have fellowship in the body of Christ. And in the word, in the, in the early church, they broke bread. They, they broke bread quite often. It says daily they broke bread. And these, the care group is going to be an integral part of the church because as the church gets begins to grow, we need in-reach ministry. You know, there's people coming here right now. One couple said, hey, all I need is $200 to get an apartment. And it would be the care group that would take care of that. And if they couldn't, they could bring it up to the church so that needs are being met. On a local level, on a smaller level, they should be dealt with. Also, the care group can deal with people that would just come to the church to, um, to use it. That's why you can deal with people's hearts. See, that's why the government will never work. The church can work. Because when Paul comes in here, you know, Paul's laying down teaching for government. He's saying, listen, if there's people that are, are, are older widows, here's how you deal with it. Boom, 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 boom. He's laying out. If you've got somebody that's a busybody and all they're trying to do is drain the church, he said, cut them off. The government can't have discernment. <clears throat> but the church of the Lord Jesus Christ can. Sometimes love comes in a size 12 foot right in the rear. Let's go. And I'm being serious when I say that. I mean, another pastor told me one time, a good slap to somebody cures a lot of stuff. <laughs> Is that scriptural? I don't know. <laughs> but I liked it when I heard it. <laughs> if you've ever been a pastor, you need to watch the movie, What About Bob? Just for some therapy. I don't know if you've seen that. Where the guy straps the dynamite to him and he says, this is death therapy. There's some individuals sometimes, boy, you know, Lord, I need more love, more love, more love. <laughs> no, but, but, but the church of the Lord Jesus Christ has discernment. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ has the ability to, to reach people, to see the love of God change them, to hold people uh, accountable, to work with people, to teach people, to encourage people. Sometimes people need a hug. Sometimes they need a little discipline. Sometimes they need some encouragement. They need different things at different times. And we're the church, and we're to bring that to them. In John 14, 16, it says, And I will pray the Father, and He will give you another helper, that He may abide with you forever. I want you to say this with me. Abide with me forever. Abide with me forever. Let's say, let's say it together. Abide in me forever. forever. Say it again. Abide, Abide in me forever. Sometimes people don't feel saved. It don't matter. Smith Wigglesworth even said that, I heard. When, you know, he says, it's a good thing I don't go by my feelings. I go by the word. Right. Sometimes I don't feel saved. That gives me some heavy hope. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Do you got hope? Well, you don't, there's no hope in dope. That's what Larry Reed, he used to get out on the streets and there, my friend, there's no hope in dope. What you need is a dose of the Holy Ghost. There's no high like the most high. Oh, my friend, I've been in and out of prison. Oh, they said to me, Larry, you might as well take your cot with you, your little rubber mat. You're going to be back here next week anyway. It's a revolving door for you. You know, it was good out on the streets. That was a lot of fun, you know, preaching, preaching out there. Boy, I'll tell you what. I'm going to try to get him in sometime. It would be a real treat to have him come back up here and do some ministry. Uh, let's turn to uh, Ezekiel. Actually, let's go to uh, Judges 6. Are you on track? Yes. I am. Get your name in there for the Snake River Penitentiary. Get your name in the, in the docket. Well, I've never done any prison ministry. It's a good time to start. It'll get, you, um, it'll get you up out of your easy chair. Well, I don't know if I can preach in, in all, front of all those comments. Then just put your name on the list. Come and pray with us. Just come. Judges 6. Just come and be a part of it. This next Saturday when we meet at the church, we're going to go out and evangelize. There is no agenda. We'll go pray. We're going to pray and then we're going to go. God will direct us. Uh, Judges 6. The, the, the message tonight 
That whole, that whole thing on, on attitude, that, that, was, that was from the Lord because I didn't really, you know, have that plan. And I want my plan to be His plan anyway. But at the same time, I know people, um, sometimes they, they use that as an excuse not to study or not be prepared. I think it's good if you're ministering to have a message or be prepared, but then be willing to, you know, deviate from it as well. Be, be, don't be so locked into what you're doing that you miss the mind of Christ maybe for somebody needing to hear something. That was for somebody who's going to be ministering because there's a lot of really mature people here that are going to be out, out ministering and doing all kinds of things for Jesus. Let's look at um, Judges 6. Um, go in his might. Um, I'm in Joshua 6. Hang on, let me turn. Judges 6. Okay. It says, Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. They did evil in the sight of the Lord. Then the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Midian for seven years. How many of you have done evil in the sight of the Lord in your past? And you got delivered into the hand of Maybe of some methamphetamines or maybe of, of some kind of a relationship that wasn't from God or some kind of a situation that wasn't from God because you were in the hand of the enemy. So the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Midian for seven years and the hand of the Midians prevailed against Israel and things prevailed against you because you were evil in the sight of God, evil in the sight of God. In 2 Timothy 2.25, it says, pray, you don't have to turn there, but it says, pray for those who are caught in the trap of the enemy, in the trap of the enemy, that they may be granted the gift of repentance. There's a song, I'm caught in a trap, I can't walk out. I love you too much. Okay, okay. Don't you know that? I'm caught in a trap. Um, some people are caught in a trap by sin. They're caught in a trap. They don't know how to get out. And they need somebody to come and pray and break the power of the devil over their life that they would be free. They need a praying mom that will go the distance and not give up, not be moved by what they see, hear, or feel, but to declare salvation over that, that one son or daughter. Hey, that's right. you, you see, if you're caught in a trap, you need somebody else's help sometimes to get out of it. And it says those who are spiritual, restore them with gentleness. Be slow to wrath, slow to anger. Yeah, there's a time when people, people need a slap. But pretty much all the time, it's not when you're wanting to give it. I've been on my way sometimes to rebuke people for something and the Lord's like, no, don't do that. Even the Lord encouraged me to do it. And so I'm going to just let him have it. And then the Lord said, no. But I'm like, Lord, you told me to give it to them. Their heart has changed. And by the time I get to, to them, I didn't need to deliver that initial message because there had been a change of heart. You need to listen to the Lord. And, and you need to be led by his spirit, not just on a one track mind. I'm going to give it to them. I'm going to let them have it. Oh, brother, listen, when I get a hold of them, you know, they really need to. Let the Holy Ghost be the Holy Ghost. Not you. But see, they, they were not, they were evil in the sight of God. They were evil in the sight of God. They were in bondage for seven years, it says. That's a long time. And God had brought them out of Egypt. Sometimes when you get saved, listen. There's people that I know they get saved and they backslide for a season. And these are people that know the word, but they're not doing it. And they're caught in bondage. They're caught in, 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 in habitual things. Did you know that God is a God who can crush habitual habits? He's a God that can crush addictions of the flesh. He's a God that can crush uh, chemical addictions. And he can crush lust, pornography, and those addictions, the lasciviousness of the flesh. He can crush those things um, of unclean spirits, of, of, of false doctrine. He can crush it in a minute. He can reveal himself. He said, 
is there anything too hard for me? He's a God that can do it. I want to bring this point up. If the children of Israel would have obeyed God, they would have never even had this face Goliath. The only reason why a Goliath was alive is because eight generations earlier, the children of Israel didn't kill all the people that God said to kill. How many things did God tell you to get rid of in your life and you let them hang it on? And all of a sudden there's a giant in your life and he's saying, hey, you haven't been able to get rid of me even after you were saved and you used the name of Jesus. I've been keeping you in bondage and he's laughing at you. And David comes out and says, man, who is this unrighteous, uncircumcised Philistine defying the Lord God? I'm going to cut his head off. That same animosity needs to rise up in your spirit. Amen. What is this unclean addiction that dares to come on the ground, the holy ground of a sanctified man or woman of God? I'm going to cut its head off. Yes. And David said, I killed the lion. I killed the bear. I'm going to kill you, Goliath. I'm going to take you out. That needs to be your testimony. Those things that the Lord has been encouraging you to root out, root them out. Jesus said, if it offends you, cut it off. It's better to go into heaven, lame to man, than into hell with all your members. Well, brother, I just can't stop doing it. Listen, I've got a hacksaw on my rig. I'm going to cut your hand off after service. We'll get her done. <laughs> but, but pastor, that's a redneck way of doing it. I grew up as a redneck. I still got a little bit of it in me. <laughs> I'm a sanctified redneck. <laughs> you do what it takes. You do what it takes. Yes, yes. I knew one guy that got saved. He was a hardcore homosexual down in, uh, uh, down in Florida. And he said, you know what, man? I, 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 I got saved, but when I come into church, I can't help but look at men. And I don't want that anymore. The Holy Ghost is tugging on me. And he says, I'd rather die than go on this way that I am. I'm so torn. And did you know what he did? He locked himself up in prayer and fasting. He says, I'm either going to die or I'm going to get set free, but I'm not going to go on this way. I know God's greater. That's the kind of attitude that I've got the utmost respect for. Now, this man walked out a free man like 21 days later. A free man. See, you do what it takes. We don't need these pansy kind of attitudes. I like what General Patton said. He said, listen, you don't die for your country. You make the other SOB die for his. That's what General Patton said. Take that same mentality into the scriptures. Don't back down. It says the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. You need to drive out the inhabitants of the enemy in your life. Drive it out. Here these people were delivered out of Egypt. They were saved. But yet they were in captivity. They were backslidden. They were backslidden people. They'd been in bondage and now they were set free, but they were in slavery. If you read it right here, they would grow their crops and so forth and all the enemies would come up and plunder them right when they were ready to harvest. They were living out of caves. I know, you know, many of you can identify with this. Time in your life, maybe you got saved, but then, then you fell back. And you know that God had much more for you. You know that God has all, all, all this blessing, but you let Goliath stick his head up. I'm telling you what now, cut it off. Amen. Those things that, hey, why did you let him grow to be a giant? If you would have done what the Lord had said many years ago, you wouldn't be in captivity. The thing that you guys have to understand is God loves you. And those things that he's asking you to do, he's not asking you to do that to hurt you or to, to, to put pressure on you. He's doing it to bless you. If you really know the Father and you know how loving God is, then it makes you more willing to yield to His every way and His every word because He's, he's good. Because He loves you. He understands things from the perspective of eternity. And Paul says it this way, Hey, this temporary pain that I'm going through is nothing compared to the eternal glory. Eye has not seen, ear has not heard the wonderful things that are prepared for those that love God. Man. And, and, and Paul's saying that, my friend. And listen, this guy's getting his ankles broken. He's getting left for dead by people with big rocks. 
throwing him against his body and crushing his bones to where the apostles have to raise him up. And he's saying this light affliction. Brother, if that's light, then I don't have any words to say about anything I've ever gone through. I can tell you that much right now. I haven't resisted unto death. And I'm not necessarily volunteering. But if the Lord sees it to it that someday I do, I'm not going to back down from it. I'm not turning away, but I'm not volunteering either. I'm just saying, Lord, give me strength to carry out those things that you've called me to do. That's my prayer. Give me strength, God. Give me the power to do what you tell me to do. I, I get a kick out of these guys. Oh, I want the ministry of Paul. Brother, if you can't even show up to church on time, forget it. Shut up. You want the ministry of Paul. Give me a break. I asked you to do something last week and you didn't carry that out and you're telling me you want the ministry of Paul. You know, you want to be beaten and, and, and have the, a messenger straight from hell buffet you on a regular basis. Come on. <laughs> if you can't be faithful to little things, you're never going to, you know. I mean, come on. I get a kick. I don't like religious, you know, cheesy comments. I like people that are real. Jesus liked people that are real. He hang out with the sinners and he rebuked the religious people. So look at this. Let's get into this thing. I don't want to keep you here too long, but there's a wonderful message in the midst of all this. I brought you up from Egypt and brought you out of the house of bondage. This is God talking to him. And that's verse 8. And I delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all who oppressed you and drove them out before you and gave you their land. I also said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not fear the gods of the Amorites whose land you dwell, but you have not obeyed my voice. Listen to me. There's some of you tonight that you have not heard the voice of God. You've never known the direction of the Lord. And you step into this place and into this church. Boy, I can't wait for those messages to go out on DVD. The ones on TV that we edited. There's one of Sherby's that is incredible. I'm just waiting for one of these guys to be flipping through at 2 o'clock in the morning. And <laughs> see this big black guy just... If you're out of control in an area, the devil's in control. He's going to be like, man, this guy's not talking about money on TV. He's going to click on that man. He's going to get set free. I mean, but no, some of you haven't heard the voice of God. But you come in here and you start hearing about the biblical Jesus. And you're hearing these teachings from different ministries and different people. And you're hearing about Jesus. And so now you've got, you've got a choice to make. Am I going to go down the way that I've always gone? Or am I going to obey the words of Jesus? Am I, in other words, am I going to be a doer of the saints? But some of you guys are in a worse position. You've known it and you've heard it, but you've never done it. The Bible says to those who know to do right and do not do it, to him it is sin. We've been talking about confession. We've been talking about praying in tongues. The Holy Spirit was stirring me up today and said, Barry, you need to spend more time with me. And I said to the Holy Spirit, I am sorry. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. I was wrong, I said. And what can I do to make it right? And he said, you know, you, you, need, to, you need to be vigilant and diligent about setting the time aside for me that you need to go to where I need to take you to hear my voice. So when the Holy Spirit nudges on your heart and tells you things to do, do it. Yes. Ask for help. Communicate with God. He's wanting that relationship. He's wanting it. Don't just show up to church and not have any time with the Lord the whole week. But if you haven't had any time with the Lord the whole week, come and get encouraged and be lifted up. Because it'll catch on to you. I'm not trying to put a condemnation on you. This is, a, this is a positive message that I'm bringing tonight. See, people already know that they have problems. They're needing the answers. And we've got them in His Word here. We've got them. And that's what I'm trying to bring to you. I'm not trying to drop a hammer onto them. I'm just sharing an example. I want to be, be diligent to listen to the Lord. I want to do what He says. I, I don't want to just, just brush it off. Because I'll miss out. I don't want to miss out. So, some of you have heard the voice of God and you haven't done it. Some of you have never heard it. Now you're hearing it and I encourage you to do it. Just do it. 
Everything that Jesus says He'll do, believe me, do it. Everything that He says for you to do, you do it. And read the words of Jesus like you read them for the very first time. Just read them and allow it to speak to you, minister to you. And think about this. We're carrying on what Jesus did. Jesus took people that were bound by many spirits and used them for some of the greatest pillars of the church. I know Mary Magdalene isn't talked about much, but was it Mary Magdalene that got seven devils cast out of her? I think it was, wasn't it? There were some writings that the Catholics hid because they didn't like women that said that she was the apostle of apostles and started over 400 churches. Well, brother, she's a woman. Let me remind you of the words of Paul. It's not male or female. It's not black, white, Mexican, or Jew. But it's all about you, Jesus. That rhymed. I wasn't trying for it to rhyme. Sometimes the Lord brings out a rhyme. Maybe I should put that into a rap for the TV session. So here we got it right here. It says, but you have not obeyed my voice. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the tabernacle tree, which was Aphra, which belonged to Joash and Abba Rezrite. Well, his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress in order to hide hide it from the Midianites. Hey, he, he's, he's threshing wheat in a cave or whatnot in the wine press, and he's, 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 he's looks like he's threshing wheat in a wine press. So he's in a winery trying to get the wheat ready because he's hiding. How many of you have bowed your heads and hidden to stuff because you've been so beat down and you don't think you can vic- get the victory? And you go to these counselors and they say, listen, once you're an addict, you're always an addict. Just sit in this circle. Hi, my name's Barry. I'm an addict. Wrong. You need to say the word of God. I once was a junkie, but Jesus set me free. Singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus set me free. Listen, you need to get a hold of the word and speak only the word. Do not confess over your life things that aren't scripture. And don't go around beating other people down that don't know any better. They know you're all wrong. Listen, that's not right. Don't beat them down. But I need you to get this. Don't call yourself what the word of God does not call yourself. And don't call other people what the word of God does not call them. The Bible says, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. The Bible says, I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Old things have passed away. I've been born again. More than a conqueror. That's what I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man or woman. You gotta sing that. You gotta get that in you. The Bible says sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Sing it and make a melody in your heart to the Lord. It's okay to be happy. It's actually suggested in the word. So look at this. Don't say things over yourself when other people are saying. Say what the Word of God says. I'm a new creation. I'm not a junkie. I'm not this. I'm not what they say. Don't let people put a jacket on you. Put the jacket of the Holy Ghost on you. This anointing that's in me, it's going to abide forever. And the best is yet to come. It's only going to get stronger. That's what you need to be saying. Now listen. He was hiding in a wine press. Hiding in a wine press, trying to make uh, uh, food so that people wouldn't steal it, the enemy. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. What? (laughs) What? He's hiding in a wine press and the angel says, The Lord is with you, mighty man of valor. Wait a minute, man. The guy is hiding in a wine press and God is calling him a mighty man of valor. That's what the Lord is saying about you. You know that message about fear? You don't don't have to believe in it. You don't have to believe in fear and torment. Believe in Jesus. The Bible says, perfect love casts out all fear. You've got to know that God loves you. He loves you. Warts and all. Bunions and all. He's hiding in a wine press. The angel of the Lord says, you mighty man or woman of valor. 
And Gideon said to him, Oh, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, then why then has all this happened to us? Have you said the same thing? If the Lord's with me, then what's going on? Hey, the Bible says the Lord will never leave you or forsake you. He's with you. He loves you. He believes in you. Hey, you might be in a situation because your ways were not, they were evil in the sight of the Lord, like the first uh, verse there. But, but he says, listen, he says, God, mighty man, the Lord is with you. You are a mighty man of valor. Gideon said to him, oh, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his miracles, which our fathers told us about? How many people have said that? Where are all the miracles? Where are, the, where are all the miracles that, that uh, happened in, in, uh, uh, with, with, with Kenneth Hagin or, or uh, with um, uh, T.L. Osborne or, or all these folks? Hey, where are the, all, all the miracles? I can tell you about testimonies that happened here. When, you know, one day T.L. Osborne was sad and he said, you know, he was talking. And he said, you know, I'm sad because with the love of Christ, I want to lay my hands on everybody. But the crowds are too big. I can't lay my hands on everybody. And he realized that the Lord was going out and laying hands on everybody. You know. But the desire in his heart, Jesus in him wanted to pray for people and lay his hand, hands on everybody. But you know, with the miracle services that have come, people have been gloriously healed and the testimonies are there. And some of you guys are saying, where are all the miracles? Well, let me ask you this time. When's the last time you stepped out of the boat and went to pray for somebody who was in a wheelchair? God will raise you out of the deepest pit of bondage that you're in, but He will not get you off the easy chair. He won't get you out of the couch. Oh, Timothy, stir up the gift that's in you. This anointing that abides with you, it's going to be in you forever. You have it in you. It's in you. Yes. And the Lord tonight is taking his finger and he's, he's stirring. He's stirring. He's stirring that anointing within you. He's stirring you up. And Gideon said to him, Oh Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all the miracles which our fathers told us? Saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midians. Hey, you delivered yourself into the hands of the Midians. You did it to you. Isn't that typical? Blaming God? But he's a rebellious people. Man, sometimes I get into church services and I see people with nasty attitudes on the back. Well, God hasn't killed me. And I want to say, and I hope he doesn't with that kind of attitude. But that's my flesh, not Jesus saying that. I'm just telling you, that's very, you know. <laughs> but you know, I mean, such a tremendous price has been paid. Jesus shed his blood on the cross and the victory's there. And he's saying, come all unto me who are heavy laden and I'll give you rest. And they're standing back there like this, you know. Hey, sometimes you've got to take those steps towards Jesus. Like we heard about the blind man. Son of David, have mercy on me. Crying out to God. Crying out. Yes. I've seen people as on their way to Jesus. If I can touch Jesus, I'll be healed. They were pursuing God. It says, if you seek me, you'll find. Knock and the door shall be open. We need to get the attitude of Christ. We need, to, we need to check up for the neck. We need to change our attitudes. If we've got bad attitudes where we're not worshiping God and we're not thankful for just being alive and being able to take a breath, man, we need to check ourselves. We can make a difference. I don't care if you're missing your arms and you wake up. You can wake up and say, at least I got legs. You've got to have a gratitude, a thankful heart. You've got to have an attitude of worship to receive from God. You've got to understand the price that was paying, man. I, I hope that your eyes can be open to what's available. Nothing's impossible. You can have it all. Everything that Jesus did, all the inheritance, it's there at your feet. We need the attitude of Christ. We need to encourage ourselves. And some people need some love. They need some love to, to break that shell, you know, that, that, that resistance. But I, I see ministry in the spirit sometimes when you're teaching the word and the love of God hits them. And all of a sudden it starts melting them. Those attitudes go away. 
We've had them in the prison, man, where they come in with their sunglasses and they're flipping you off. And by the end of the service, they're weeping on the altar because the Holy Ghost is doing surgery on them. That's awesome. Glory to God. Is there anything too hard for God? No. Nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then the Lord turned to him. So now he's whining about, hey, God, God this to where, where are all the miracles? Did not the Lord bring us out from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. No, you did it to you. Understand, you did it to you. God didn't do it to you. God is a God of heal, healing, deliverance, miracles. He's a good God. He's a loving God. He loves crooked people, twisted people. He makes the crooked way straight. And then the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? Where are the miracles? You go! Yes. That was the Lord's response. He didn't even deal with his nasty attitude about, you know, the Lord delivered me into this. You know, realistically, he did it to him. Their ways were evil in the sight of God. They were rebellious people. Man, I, I see this lady, and I'm praying for her. She, uh, she works at a, a, a nightclub, and, and there's been some abuse that has happened to her by men, and, and, and she's blaming God for it. She, the devil, and sin have been the compound of destruction in her life. But the creator of the universe that gives life and has come to give life and life more abundantly, she's pointing the finger at. I cry out to the Lord, how can this be? I cry out to the Lord, how can I give her the truth? so that she can see things the way they truly exist. Lord, break off the shackles from her eyes that she can see. God's love is able to touch the people that were held up for 10 years and also the person that did it. It's able to do it. I believe in capital punishment because with a spiritually dead person, that's the only way that you can bring law and order. The only reason somebody won't hurt somebody who's not in the love of God is because the punishment for hurting them is worse than the benefit that they're going to get from doing it. So you need that. We need the Ten Commandments back up on the, on the animals of all our, yes. of all our places. Yes. But I would go to this man and I, if I had a chance, I would bring salvation to this man. Amen. That song by Michael Jackson, You Can Bring Salvation Back. Just call Jesus' name and he'll be there. People are, you know, hey, this is the message. Go in his might. The angel of the Lord turned to him and said, go in this might of yours and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? So he said to him, oh, my Lord, how can I save Israel? Indeed, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites as one man. The Lord is with you tonight. He didn't leave them, even though they were under bondage and siege. He didn't leave them. And he was saying, Arise and go forth. This anointing that's going to be, that's in you, it's in you forever. This is the message tonight. Go in his might. Does anybody have the Amplified Bible? Nobody? Can you reverse 14? Judges 6, 14. feel so sorry for those people that always have this attitude of we're going to someday do something or we're going to do it tomorrow. No. Today is the day of salvation. You were not promised tomorrow. 
Lord turned on you, the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this your might, and you shall save Israel from the hands of Midian. Have I not said it? Okay, it's the same. But the angel of the Lord, his response to him is he said, Listen, hey, you go. Where are all the miracles? He said, You do them. You do them. You go. Go in his might. That's the name of the message tonight, is to go in his might. That was another rhyme, and I wasn't even trying on that one either. I can't believe it's the Holy Ghost bringing out all this rhyme. Have you ever seen a redneck rhyme? I don't know that I'm a redneck. I'm more of a brown neck. I don't even know where they came up with that term. Go in his might. Go in his might. You can look at this, this message from Gideon. And some of you guys have hidden in the wine press, but God is saying to you, go in his might. You've been hiding. You, maybe you like Gideon, you feel unqualified. Maybe every time you try to do something, Midianites came in there and stole all your stuff. You know, all your food. And you're one man, and God's saying, listen, and you're like, man, where are all these testimonies that Sherby has, or that this brother has, or this brother? You know, I get spit on when I go out and evangelize. I never got anybody saved. You know, I don't know. Maybe that hasn't happened. One time we went out evangelizing. This, this kid got smelled you know, because he was being rude. He goes, I suffered for Christ. I'm like, no, you're not. You didn't. You were being rude. You deserved it, brother. You aren't going to get anything in heaven for that one. You know, you should have approached that lady like this. You know, but God is able to take you from where you're at right now tonight. In the midst of, there's a message that the Holy Spirit was speaking to you guys about fear. A week ago, go, you know, or so ago. Get rid of that. Get rid of that fear. Come into God's love. He's like, hey, I'm the weakest of the clan. God says, you go. I'm with you. You mighty man. He's hiding out. But he's seen something. He's seen something in him that nobody else seen. And God sees something in you that nobody else has seen. Maybe you've put a jacket on yourself and you've put limitations on yourself and the Holy Spirit is saying to you tonight, take those limitations off. Yes. Those areas that you've been in fear or torment, those areas that you, you've been bound, I love you. I'm here for you. I'm going to deliver you. I'm going to complete the work that I started in you personally, but I'm also going to use you to free the people of Israel. I'm also going to use you to touch the city of Vancouver and those yes. people that are bound Amen. and in captive by the enemy. Amen. Go in his might. Yes. Lord, where are all the miracles? If you ask that question, I'm going to have you preach one of the nights at the next miracle crusade. What? You're asking where they are. Go in his might. You've got this anointing that's been in you for, from the get-go. It says it's going to be in you forever. We're not here to lift the man up. We're here to lift Jesus up. Amen. If you lift up Jesus, you don't have to put on a show or conjure up all kinds of things. All you got to do is simply continue on what he was doing and tell the people the simple good news of Christ and him and him crucified and him raised from the dead. Yes. The goodness of God. All you got to do is tell him it's, it's God's will to heal you. And here's the scripture. He says, word to heal him. All you got to tell him is the blood of Jesus is more powerful than that demon, and than that sickness, than that bondage. Hey, some of you guys have been in a wine press <coughs> trying to get a little bit of grain. And the angel of the Lord comes to you and says, you know, what, what, what's going on here? You're a mighty man. You're a mighty woman. But you've been beat down. And the Lord is saying, cast away all that fear and stand up. And do it. And go in his way. And be that person that prays for those people. Or evangelizes at the bus stop. Or tells somebody that God loves them. Be that person. That's on the phone with somebody when they call. A salesperson. You lead them to Jesus. 
One time I had a Muslim come to sell me a Kirby vacuum cleaner. By the time he left, he received Jesus Christ into his life. And I prayed for him and his other friend. You know? And I had to tell him, he was a black Muslim from Portland, I had to tell him that Farrakhan has nothing to do with the Muslims, had nothing to do with blacks or blacks' freedom. It was from two brothers many years ago in the Middle East. Hey, there's a lot of people that are living in deception, and you guys are the mighty men and women of the, the you're the carriers of truth. Like that woman who's blaming God for the abuse that happened. She should be blaming the devil and rebuking the devil and commanding the devil to go. But she doesn't know any better. They need a few Gideons to tell them and lead the way. And the church is sitting in the little wine press. Oh, the devil's scary. He's been, no, he's not. He's under my feet. And how dare he say something against me or anybody in Vancouver? How dare he do that? How dare he? Just for that, I'm going to break more prisons free. Just for that, we're going to see this thing go faster. You know what Jesus did when one of his friends got killed? When John the Baptist got killed? He came out on the scene and set 5,000 people free. Preached to them, healed them, delivered them. That was his revenge. That needs to be your revenge. When you hear something on the news about somebody locking somebody up and you know what? Pray for them and pray for the people that were abused. It's only the blood of Jesus can help either of them. Well, I hear these people talking about sociopath and this path and that path and that. You don't got any answers. We are the carriers of the truth. I can answer more questions to the news media than those dumb psychologists. I'm thinking that's wrong. Hey, you guys don't know anything. Oh, they got all their education, but they don't got any truth. They don't got any common sense. That's right. Praise the Lord. Well, I feel freedom in the Lord and in the Spirit of the Lord. And I know that He's here tonight. And I know that He spoke to some of you guys in your heart and He stirred some things up. And we're going to see a mighty church come together and go forth and set this city free. Not only this city, the whole world. We're going to see firebrands being sparked and sent out and people staying and going. We're going to see people coming and serving the Lord in a mighty way. We're going to see a mighty church arise all over the world. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the time of harvest. Vancouver shall be saved, washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. We're going to get these messages out. We're going to get them out. The guy from the TV station said, listen, every other Thursday night we have two hours, and this last time nobody came. If you want to come down for two hours, we have a live shot, and we'll just film you. And you can do whatever you want for two hours. If nobody comes, you can come in. I said, seriously? I said, does a duck have lips? No. (laughs) No, I said, I think we got a few people that would come and want to share their testimonies. You should be writing down your testimony. You should be ready to share the hope of God when you're called upon. You should be ready. Paul was... The Apostle Paul stood up and said, listen to what happened to me on the road of Damascus. I was crucifying Christians, but then God appeared to me and this is what happened. You need to be ready to share your testimony. You need to say, at this time, I was living in darkness, but Jesus did this. And he set me free and he saved me. For two hours, Clark County can hear about the love of God for free. No cost to us. But it takes willing vessels. Lord, I just declare tonight, Father God, you have your way. Lord, change, change, oh God, our attitudes. Jesus, tonight, tonight you're here. You're here in these folks. You're here in the ministry. Lord, I break off. I break off every hindrance to the folks here. I rebuke by the authority of Jesus Christ every unclean spirit of fear. Go and do not return. I declare liberty of Christ over every mind, heart, and soul now in Jesus' name. I declare the healing power of God over every body physically in Jesus' name. I declare the will and the kingdom of heaven being released to them. I declare financial abundance, blessing, and provision. Uh, accounts that are overdrawn be in right order, right standing. Diligence and work, jobs and wealth coming to your people. I declare, Father God, right now, people releasing people and forgiveness in their hearts, not holding on to unforgiveness and hate. I declare, Lord, Father, a mighty, mighty, mighty move of your Spirit just going forth. It's your, it's your Holy Spirit that breaks the yoke. 
It's you, Jesus. Your anointing breaks the yoke. And we declare that anointing going through Vancouver tonight. Oh, we declare this gospel being lifted up. And every person here declaring the goodness of God. Preaching the gospel with boldness. Let the boldness of Christ, I declare the boldness of Christ over those that are here. That they'd open their mouths for you, Jesus. That they would not keep quiet. That they would open their mouths, Lord. Let this message tonight stir them. Oh God, I can do nothing. I myself am only a man talking. And me, I cannot do nothing. But let, Father God, your life and your love come through tonight to shake and to change. Oh Lord, but you, Jesus, that is living in me and through me, let it come forth and bless the people. Let them get their eyes, Lord, off of themselves and off of the devil and off of other people and onto you. Let their faces be set like a flint, Father God. Immovable, I pray. In Jesus' name, that you would shift some hearts and turn some keys in some hearts tonight. Let this message, Father God, unlock some keys and some hearts that they would be liberated from fear. In Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. If you feel like the Lord has been calling you to do some things, and you feel, you know, like there's been a real hindrance, I, I want to pray for you tonight. I want to agree with you that those things will be broken and that liberty will be in the place that you will open your mouth with boldness. Oh, that the fire of the Holy Ghost will touch you. That it will lift you up and project you forward in the things that God has for you. Hallelujah. You guys can stand tonight. Let's, uh, let's spend some time right now singing this song. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Back together again. There's nothing that he can't do. He's awesome. 
He's the name above abuse and heartache. He's the name above fear. He's the name above cancer. He's the name above hell. He's the name above everything that you're facing. Oh, mighty man and oh, mighty woman of God. Go! Go! Go in the power of the living God. Nothing is going to stop you. You shall overcome. You shall tread on serpents and scorpions. You shall not be stopped. Hallelujah. You're going to preach boldly. Lord, you are 